So welcome to February's office hour. I can't even believe that we're already a full month into 2024. I'm not sure if anybody is still misdating their checks or still write checks, but uh, it takes a while to get into that habit. As we do every month, we'll start with introductions of our team. My name is Shelley Shassi Jandro. I'm the director of the Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs. Our colleague, Karen Kuziak, is supporting CARES, Carissa, and ARP. She was not able to join us this morning. I'm Kevin Harrington. I'm the GEAR and EANS coordinator. I am Maisha Asha. I am the fiscal coordinator. I'm Terry Beal. I'm a management analyst, and our other management analyst, um, Didi Roberts, is out. And we also have Natalie Owens, who is our procurement analyst. She supports a lot of the work uh, in regards to our EANS program, but also our statewide programs, who is unable to join us today. We have a few things that we want to talk to you about this morning, a few friendly reminders to get us back into thinking about certain things like GEMS controls and contacts, as well as requirements of ARP. We'll also highlight the performance report, which we have, was hot off the press in January. We have a little bit more information that we wanna share with you folks. We'll also indicate some information related to ARP invoicing. As you can imagine, we're in the home stretch of all of the emergency relief funds, and we wanna be sure that we are up to date with all of the compliance items associated with invoicing. As usual, our objective is to be sure that participants, SAUs, and the SEA are using ESER funds effectively and in line with all federal requirements. GEMS is our electronic grant management system. So it houses the applications as well as the all the invoices and reimbursement requests. This is our critical platform which means the contact information in these two entities within GEMS is really important to be up to date. So if you happen to have some transition either in your ESCA, excuse me, in your ESER coordinator, your superintendent, in your business office professionals, it is important that you go to GEMS and you update that username and password. What we are required to do under our compliance is pull a list of GEMS users every quarter. So if there are more than two users, one in the application side of GEMS and one in the financial grant reimbursement side of GEMS, if there is more than two users at the district level, you likely will hear from a member of our team because again, we work under the philosophy that there is one point person when it comes to application components. There is one point person at the district level when it comes to financial manners, matters. And essentially you folks are working together to be able to support your superintendent, but also your other community members with the information associated with embedded within these two aspects. We do have some step-by-step -step instructions on our website and the two uh, images that we have highlighted here are identified in that step-by-step -step instruction. If you happen to have an individual who has left the district and you're looking for new username and passwords, there's also information in our step-by-step -step instructions to be able to obtain that. As I mentioned, we wanna highlight a few of our friendly reminders. As you know, we have one emergency relief funding source left. That is the American Rescue Plan Act, better known as ARP or ESER 3. One of the statutory requirements within ARP is to confirm that districts are allocating at least 20% of their allocation to reservation projects that are supporting learning loss. So you see that embedded in the application and the logic that's highlighted here on the screen. However, we also tie that into our federal grant reimbursement system. So we are also tracking the invoices that come in for those reservation projects and confirming 
that districts are meeting that 20% set aside requirement of ARP. If you are finding yourself in a place where you've had some challenges, I would encourage you to revisit all of your reservation projects as well as your additional projects to be sure that if there are any projects that are truly related to learning loss and the recovery of the education of our marginalized students, that those projects are highlighted in reservation and you can work with our team because you will see here very shortly that the US Department of Ed is really honing in on that 20% and how much has been utilized, how it has been utilized, and where has the targeted student population been impacted. Which brings us to our very next topic for today, which is the FY23 performance report. In January, the US Department of Ed had just given us a heads up that a performance report was going to be released. About two weeks ago, that performance report was released and our team immediately jumped on the request from the US Department of Ed and the information embedded in the US Department of Ed's performance report. We have developed a FY23 performance report. We are working with the GEMS software developer to get it into GEMS. You will see that very shortly, hopefully in the next week or so on GEMS. And what we will do is we will try to provide any supports to districts as we know that this potentially, not potentially, this is going to be a heavy lift for districts. So we've structured the performance report as similar to last year as possible, and then indicated where some of the new information is being requested. The performance report will be due on April 12th, 2024. Our team is currently building a web page within our website or on our website to house a fair amount of supports as well as a blank copy of the performance report that is going to be moved into GEMS here in the next week or so so that you folks can get started on the performance report and piecing it out to the, to the individuals who will help collect the information. We know that it will be require attention from at a minimum, the ESER coordinator, as well as the business office. Every single collection from the US Department of Ed has a paperwork burden statement that is required. So what we've pulled here is the parts of the paperwork burden statement that is indicating how much time is estimated to complete an LEA performance report. And as you can see here, it's 140 hours per LEA response. There is also 140 hours at the state level that we anticipate um, with developing, analyzing, and correlating all of the responses to be able to submit to the US Department of Ed. The chart at the bottom, what we try to do for everyone is identify any new material. So maybe that you focus some time and energy. So I'm gonna walk through that chart in particular. And I know it's small um, and it is preliminary data at this point or a preliminary structure. We hope to have, as I mentioned earlier, we hope to have GEMS and the performance report on GEMS uh, by the end of next week. So the cover sheet is going to be identical to last year. That is where the superintendent certifies that the information is accurate and as uh, truthful as possible. Section or part two has information that you would have seen in FY22's performance report, but also some enhancements. So last year you were required to report your expenses. And when we talk about expenses, we're really talking about the money that you received as a district after you've requested a reimbursement between July 1st of 2022 through June 30th of 2023. So even though you 
may have submitted an invoice in 2023 for expenses that are out of this time period, because you have only submitted that reimbursement within this period of performance, you must report it in this performance report. The way this is structured and we work on a reimbursement model as you folks all know, we do not know that you have an expense until you have requested that from us as a, as a department and the US Department of Ed does not is not aware of that expense or that activity until we have requested those funds on your behalf um, from the US Department of Ed. And all of that takes place the minute you start submitting an invoice reimbursement request within the federal grant reimbursement system. So part two is going to have those expenses that you re received reimbursement for in, the, in this FY23 year by categories. The four large categories, which are going to be identical this year are addressing physical, physical health and safety, mental health, services, operational and maintenance, and meeting academic needs of students. Those four categories are identical and the structure will be identical. The new information is really related to the US Department of Ed has embedded activities in each of those four categories. So for example, under maintaining physical health and safety, there might be uh, an activity related to transportation or mask wearing or additional staff support. And, and those activities will have to equate to the same dollar value in which you've identified by the category. The other new section that's related to financials that is um, highlighted here in red is hiring and retention of staff. Last year, the, the performance report asked if you had used any ESER funds to hire or retain staff, and it was either a radio button of yes or no for a number of different staff types. This year, the U.S. Department of Ed would like to know the dollar value associated with each of those staff types. So, for example, if you hired a social worker, and you used ESER funds, they are asking for the dollar value that was reimbursed in salaries and benefits over all three of the ESER funding sources for that particular staff type. A couple of the other new sections is, last year we asked about interventions and it was a radio button for yes or no. For example, did you participate in high tutoring, high quality tutoring, summer learning, summer enrichment, and the radio buttons were yes or no. Now the US Department of Ed is asking, how much did you spend on these initiatives? If you put them in place, how much of your ESER funding was to support that activity or that initiative? We also highlighted in last year's um, performance report that uh, we were going to, that we knew the US Department of Ed was going to ask a little bit more about interventions and the participation of certain interventions. So you'll see that part four is completely brand new and essentially they are most definitely looking at quantity and quality. So how many students of what subgroup, all of that uh, information is being collected in the new part four, interventions and participation. In addition, they are looking at the overall student enrollment by subgroup. So both of those sections are new. Um, if we jump to part eight, which is related to FTEs, that part is not new. We did have questions last year about FTEs. The part that is new or the focus that is new is they are asking at the school level and staff type, the FTE counts. So at the school level, how many special educators did you have? What was the FTE for your special educators? And that uh, staff type is as of October 1st, 2022. And they're essentially establishing a baseline to see the support over time at the local level, 
within each individual school. And that was a lot of information in a very short period of time, very condensed. So what we have done is we have created um, an entire office hour specifically related to FY23's performance report. And that will be hosted in, and offered on Tuesday, February 13th at 10 a.m. So we do encourage you to use the link from the chat box to register yourself, but also to share with your colleagues. So once you've had an opportunity to review the information and the data, we think it's important that you invite others to attend so that they can also listen and hear and understand the request that is being made and how they might be able to contribute to the completing the FY23 performance report. We also had positive feedback about our no agenda walk-in office hours last year for the performance report. So we are committing to that again this year. So starting on Wednesday, February 28th, you can join us at any time between 11 a.m. and 12 a.m., uh, 12 p.m., excuse me, 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. through April 10th. We will have at least one of our teammates there to, to answer any questions that you may have related to the performance report. So if you have a, a particular question about the FTEs and how to calculate them or where they might be housed within the performance report, jump in. As I mentioned, anytime between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m., there will be a member on the Zoom link that was just posted in the chat box. When you register for one session, it will allow you the connectivity information for all of those Wednesdays between February 28th through April 10th. So you don't have to constantly re-register for those Wednesday walk-in no agenda open sessions. Once you've registered, you, you are able to participate at any time. We also encourage others from your district to jump into those because we will come, as I mentioned, for that hour, we will sit in our Zoom room and we will answer any questions that come about. So if you happen to have a conflict and you can only join us at 1132, know that somebody will be there to let you in and to answer any of your questions. And now we're at the point where we provide a friendly reminder about ARP invoicing. I know that at the local level, we tend to see first in, first out concepts when it comes to reimbursement requests. And you likely have been focusing a lot of your time and energy on closing out Carissa, both locally, but also through our reimbursement system. And that is completely understandable, but now we're at the point where we also want to be able to articulate the fact that our districts are doing some wonderful work and are using the emergency relief funding. So at the beginning of um, January, we had over half of the state's ARP allocation still at the table, having yet been drawn down for districts from districts. So we are really encouraging you to think about getting your invoicing up to date for ARP, spending some time early on in this calendar year, looking at when was the last time an invoice was submitted, what type of expenses have transpired, and really attempting to get back up into compliance with ARP invoicing. I will indicate that this is also a focus of our team now that we are in the final stages of closing out Carissa, ESER 2. We are focusing some of our time and our energy on reaching out to districts who have either not invoiced for uh, calendar year 23 and or uh, invoices that were reopened by our team that have yet to have been resubmitted. But we do encourage you districts all to think about how you might be able to uh, come into compliance with that condition of submitting quarterly invoices. As always, we are always here to help. 
whether it be reaching out to one individual teammate or joining us in our office hours or participating in the federal fiscal office hour, which is the fourth Thursday of every month. So as I alluded to, we collectively as a department have come together with other federally funded programs and developed this new business manager office hour. We are, we have been conducting it every fourth Thursday of every month since November. Essentially what that office hour is designed to do is we address overarching topics and then each program does a financial highlight of where we are at or any fiscal matters that are associated with our particular program. And then we open up the floor for questions and answers, but we also have a representative from all of the offices listed available. So if there was a need to have a, a one-off conversation with our colleagues from ESEA, you could jump into a breakout room right in that office hour. So if your business managers are unaware of this office hour, we would encourage them to attend, but we would also encourage you to participate um, if you have some fiscal matter questions. As always, we are always here to help. This is our contact information. So we have program coordinators and we also have our fiscal side of the house. So please reach out to any one of us for any questions or any matters that you'd like to discuss that are related to ESER funds. And at this time, I think there has not been any questions in the chat box, but I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and open up the floor for any questions that you folks may have. 